electric TV burp. Tiny guardsman joined by little chef on the world's greatest money maker. He's the world's most There's the tiny guardsman. There's the little chef. <laughs> Peggy admires new Archie Mitchell waxwork in Albert Square. <laughs> and Kate Humble insults Prince Philip on Autumn Watch. To find out, we need to find a flocking geek. <laughs> Your mouth out. <laughs> yeah? Oh, flocking geek. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Jimmy Doherty's been up to this week. Oh. After half an hour, you get a very sore wrist. <laughs> hey, oh, thanks, yeah. No, yeah. He was making butter. Yeah. <laughs> you not really. <laughs> I knew there'd be a perfectly innocent explanation. Yes, because this week Jimmy and his food factory were investigating dairy products. And in particular, where eggs come from. And why the eggs we get in the supermarket all look the same. Straight away, if I pick a selection, there's a, a huge egg that looks like a walnut. What's happened there is the hens had some sort of um, shock or stress whilst it was producing the egg. <laughs> yeah, if your chicken is under a lot of stress, it will lay odd-shaped eggs. I've been trying to relax my chicken by sitting it in front of the TV. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How'd you get on? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Oh. You've been watching Hole in the Wall with Anton Dubuque again, haven't you? <laughs> I warned you about that, it's very stressful. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Uh, bring on the wall! <laughs> egg hole in the wall, I like that. <laughs> but you've got to be careful with eggs. Eggs is fragile, ain't they? Most people think that eggs are pretty fragile, but you couldn't be further from the truth. If I try to break this egg between my thumb and fingers and really give it a squeeze, Oh, nothing. <laughs> put it in the palm of my hand and really get some leverage on it. Ah, still nothing. <laughs> Good squeeze. Oh, Jeff Cates. <laughs> no good, is it? <laughs> Come on, you've got a lot of muscles. You go and crack. Go on, go for it. Go on. Hard as you can. <laughs> yeah, right. That's strong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you can't break it, can you? No. <laughs> can't. You can't. <laughs> uh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I just got carried away. I can't imagine what our next egg's going to look like. <laughs> Oh dear, Ugh. a Hitler egg. <laughs> oh. Bring on the wall! <laughs> oh, it's broken! Oh, Hitler egg got killed. Never mind. Mm. Jimmy's just not interested in eggs. No, once again, he's taking a look at processed milk. If you look on the bottle here, there's a layer of cream. Now, this is your standard supermarket milk and the layer of cream has disappeared. So what have they done to it, and where has it gone? I drank it. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't looking at it, nipped him with a straw. <laughs> Naughty, I know, but I love cream. <laughs> Double, single, whipped, clotted, but not that spray cream. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy sets out to make supermarket-style homogenised milk in his very own food factory. In goes the milk. You can see the milk travelling down, slowly making all its way down, bomb, into the copper tubing. And through the pipe in the hot bath. After pasteurisation, the milk is much safer to drink. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn Watch now, the BBC's follow-up to the very successful Spring Watch. Since Bilotti left, they've been auditioning a number of different presenters. I like Martin Hughes' games. I just wish he'd make his mind up whether he needs glasses or not. 
They've had over a thousand hits on their website every day. Uh, reports are coming from Harlequin Ladybirds as far as <laughs> lovely story in the news this week. The Wildfire <laughs> Wetlands Trust are waiting for the arrival of one very, very special bird. Thank you very, very much indeed. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right, now you've been showing us those spectacular. <laughs> It's so exciting. Let's get a woodpecker in one. Anyway. Right. <laughs> I went down to my local bird and got to the other In the meantime, everyone's favourite autumn watch presenter, Simon King, was where he longs to be, up a tree, reminiscing about times gone by. It's a very meditative process, climbing a tree and then sitting for sometimes hours in the canopy. It's something I don't get to do much anymore. And... <laughs> Climbing this tree today has reminded me what I've been missing. Yeah, yeah, I don't... <laughs> Simon! Sorry. Don't play with your ball so close to the tree that it won't get caught. Yeah, yeah. It's... <laughs> it's full of juicy nuggets of information, though, Autumn Watch, like what bats do first thing in the morning. This one is now going to wake up. It'll probably uh, urinate and uh, defecate. <laughs> Not ideal if you're hanging upside down. <laughs> Martin, Martin was keen to meet Christina. She made him a promise. Here in Wiltshire, Christina Stapley, a medical herbalist, has agreed to show me around her local patch. <laughs> I bet she has. It turns out Simon does impressions too. I loved his impression of a fox. <laughs> yeah, not bad. That's one I've been working on, actually. <laughs> but my best impression so far is a pair of warblers. <laughs> Right, John. <laughs> yes, Edwin. <laughs> it's a living. Talking of X Factor, Simon off Autumn Watch has been practicing his voting face. Great for wildlife, but brilliant for people too, as we discovered when we asked some of the regulars that visit the park. If you want to vote for Simon King, the lines are open now. <laughs> Or has Ray Mears done something with his hair? Perhaps more importantly, <laughs> he wrote <laughs> Looking good, girlfriend. <laughs> I do like Ray, but I'm not sure he's the best person to front this year's anti-drink drive campaign, do you? Stop. Think. Maybe even have a drink. <laughs> Stop. Think. Maybe even have a drink. <laughs> Fancy a jar? Why not take the car? <laughs> Yes, the original survival expert is back in Ray Mears' northern wilderness. Ray was privy to a demonstration of the ages-old tradition of making patterns in the bark for decorations. She learned this skill from her grandmother. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's amazing. That's beautiful. The light comes through it. It's just incredible. <laughs> yeah, my nan taught me how to do that too. <laughs> it just, uh, it just uh, on the, on the air, and then a bundle. It just unfold that, and I think you'll you'll like that. It's uh, it's Jamie Afro. Off. <laughs> off which brings us to our TV Expert of the Week. TV Expert of the Week. Snow is a strange material. If I were to take my hand and put it into the snow, it's going to come out freezing cold. <laughs> there was an unexpectedly high voice on Coal House at War this week. Oh, what are you doing? I smashed my hand against the rock and the pit went for it as well. I'm all right. That's only a bit of back. It is, that's broken though. <laughs> I wonder if he's ever met Barry Gibb, who pitched up on Strictly at the weekend. <laughs> it's 
See, I like the bloke with the high voice on Cold House of War, but then I like Barry Gibb on Strictly. <laughs> Which is better? There's only one way to find out. <gasps> to TV Burp. Outbreak of Janet Street Porter disease on casualty. <laughs> Frankenstein Sally on Emmerdale. We all ready? Apart from Laurel. She's been detained at work. Oh. <laughs> and Bollywood wardrobe on The Family. Maybe it leads to Narnia. Get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Get out of it. <laughs> EastEnders now, and I learned a useful bit of information from the gay caterer Christian this week. Um, what are you doing skulking about? Well, you know what they say. Where there's greenery, there's queenery. <laughs> <laughs> and where there's shrubbery, there's... <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. No, I wasn't. I was going to say, with the shrubbery, there's bugs and all sorts out there, so be careful where you sit down. Honestly, you lot. <laughs> Owen was busy warning his ex, Denise, about Lucas's religious fervour. Do you know what he said to me? I don't care. No, after the punch, the punch that came from nowhere, he started gabbing on about being a servant of the Lord, all avenging angels and righteous destruction. So congratulations, Dee, you're about to get hitched to the guy who thinks he's the leading man in the Book of Revelations. And we all know how that ends. Uh, not sure. Uh, <laughs> did it end with... <laughs> of course not. And if you don't want to know the ending to the book of Revelations, look away now. <laughs> it ended with all the believers attaining salvation and ascending to heaven, whilst all the sinners descend to hell in eternal damnation. Great ending, God. Nice one. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for poor Billy Mitchell. His constipation finally came to a head. <laughs> it's massive! Yes, all right. So put the bag over it and pull it loose. <laughs> then seal it up and bring it down here. <laughs> Not really, no, he was, he was trying to dislodge your wasp nest. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> Saeed was still being haunted by the phantom blackmailer of Albert Square, terrified that they'd write a letter to his mum. Then suddenly, there was his opportunity. A postman, with his mail, asleep in the calf. If only Christian could tease the letters from his grasp. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> oh. Have another go. Smell your fingers. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, I'm expecting a letter. But oh, look, my postman. Oh, he's asleep. I wonder if I can just. Do... Oh, I still might be able to. Oh, don't worry, I've got an idea. Give me my letter! The good news is, the strikes were called off to allow fresh talks between Royal Mail and the Communication Workers' Union. <laughs> it was... November the 5th, of course, and I think all that rich bonfire night food was getting to Ian. I want you to look me in the eye and tell me you want this child. <laughs> yeah, they can cause windy pops. <laughs> It's the same problem with fancy French food, of course, as Raymond Blanc outlined in the restaurant. Good morning to you all. Good morning. You must know that all over Great Britain, in places like this, 
restaurant chains are fighting for their lives, <laughs> fighting for the same customers. You know what? This week they were given the task of working in some of the high street's most successful chains. Stephen and Rebecca ended up in a sushi restaurant. Pretty complicated, rolling sushi. One dish that must be made to order is the hand roll. Used by Japanese chefs to show off their skills. Yeah, the hand roll. <laughs> Let's have a go. Pop that in there, a little bit of that. And that. Just roll that up, there we go. <laughs> Dip it in some sauce, a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> a bit too much wasabi on that. <laughs> Sean and Janet ended up in a pizza parlour, but pretty soon things descended into chaos, with many diners not receiving their pizzas. So Sean took a drastic step. Just have some quiet, just for a second. Anybody who's waited for their food, um, I'm really, really sorry. Now, my wife and I have a flower business in London, and if you ever pop, pop into that shop, I'll get everybody the finest, the finest bouquets. <laughs> What's a pepper on there, Harry? No, no, no. What's a parmesan, Harry? No, no, no. Lovely. There you go, Harry. Oh. Oh. How about some plant food, yeah, Harry? Go on, go on. Yes. There we go. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh. 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 You want to see your best bit, Sean? Yes, please. Yeah. It's this week, the restaurant in a nutshell. <laughs> this week's the restaurant in a nutshell. I'm not worried at all. It's, uh, I'm very, very excited about it. I feel I'm going to do very, very well. This is... I, I really feel it. Sean, Janet, you will not be opening a restaurant. <laughs> this week's the restaurant in a nutshell. Neighbours now, and foreign languages featured quite heavily this week. You see, Carl was making a call to Korea, but as he doesn't speak Korean, he had to get a translator in. Thing was, she seemed to be making up her own story. A situation has arisen regarding my son. You need to know that he's living under this roof again. <laughs> Um, we're asking that you let both of you live here. Um, my wife and I will act as chaperones and, uh, and we give our personal guarantee that nothing untoward will happen. Oh, that reminds me, I must phone my auntie in Korea. She's due home later today, but I, I can't pick her up from the airport. <laughs> oh, but I don't speak Korean. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, can you tell her that uh, I can't make it to the airport to meet her? Harry, she got to be honest, I can't go to the But I'll get someone to pick her up from the airport. Actually, this man is a big fan of the airport. And I'll, I'll make up the bed in the spare room for her when she arrives. Hmm, your voice is good. I'm good. And I'll get a couple of ready meals from Tesco Express on the way home. <laughs> Bye. Annyeong. <laughs> it's competition time. So, where was the knitted character? This week. Welcome back. Still to come, Bill Foley. Uh, first day, it is what weekend on the X Factor with a sprinkling of Halloween howlers. If you spot the knitted character hidden in one of next week's TV shows, you could win a TV Burp book, DVD, and your very own knitted character. Just go to itv.com forward slash TV Burp by 5 p.m. on Wednesday and tell us where and when you saw him. And we'll pick a winner from all the correct entries. You must be 16 or over to enter. Too bad, you can't do it, and by the time you're old enough, we won't be running it. <laughs>
<laughs> restaurant in our living room now. The belter of a format from Virgin One, in which members of the public are invited to turn their homes into restaurants for one night only. Undoubted stars of this week were Gary and his wife, Deborah. The beauty of this couple is, if you didn't hear what he said, she repeats it for you. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eighteen. And possibly one more in there. Possibly one more in there. So that'd be 20. That'd be 20. At a time. At a time. At a time. And then, John, you managed to serve 36 diners who left a grand total of £518.46. 46 pence. 46 pence. <laughs> 46 pence. <laughs> But Gary and Deborah's masterstroke was to pre-cook their food when necessary and just reheat in the microwave. A lot of customers requires a lot of ding-dings. It's looking more and more like a commercial kitchen every second. So if you come in and say they're ready for the main, within four minutes... They'll be having it. They've got it. Yeah. So we can have ding-ding, 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 and ding-dings on his way. <laughs> oh, they all make a different noise. <laughs> yeah, they all make a different noise. If you could get the right ones, you could maybe get a tune out of them. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, conducting the Microwave Orchestra of Rotherham, please welcome Gary and Deborah. <laughs> Available next week, Harry Hill's TV Burp Gold is on DVD in the shops and online from Monday. Well, it's the battle of the soundtracks next tonight. The X Factor's on the way. And don't forget, you can log on to the website and have your say throughout with our live chat online.